Psalm 27 stands before us as a beacon of light in times of darkness, a steadfast guide along life's path. Let me ask you, where in your life are you currently waiting on the Lord? How can you embrace this waiting with courage, trusting in His perfect timing and plan? As we reflect on these questions and the powerful verses of Psalm 27, we encourage you to stay grounded in your journey of faith, anchored in the profound wisdom and unwavering love of our Heavenly Father. I will also pray a powerful prayer with you today in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings God has for you through this prayer. Let this message be a moment of divine connection as we come together, seeking God's light, salvation, and strength for every area of our lives. If this message resonates with you, type Amen in the comments below and let's unite in faith, trusting that God's perfect plan is always at work. Now, let us examine the verses of Psalm 27. Verse 1 says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? These words remind us that when we place our trust in the Almighty, fear fades away like the morning mist before the rising sun. In this verse, we are shown the profound truth that the Lord is our source of light and salvation. Just as the sun dispels the darkness of night, so does the Lord bring light to the darkest corners of our lives. In His light, we find clarity and purpose. We need not fear the uncertainties that surround us, for the Lord is our fortress, our refuge in times of trouble. When the psalmist declares, The Lord is my light and my salvation, it is also an affirmation of unwavering faith. It's a declaration that the Creator of the heavens and the earth is not only the guiding light of our path, but also the source of our rescue and deliverance. In a world where fear often seeks to overwhelm us, this verse serves as a powerful reminder that we have a refuge, a stronghold, and a light that banishes all darkness. The verse goes further asking, Whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? These questions echo through the ages, challenging us to consider the root of our fears. In the face of life's trials and tribulations, it's easy to succumb to fear, fear of the unknown, of failure, of rejection. But the psalmist's inquiry redirects our focus. If the Lord is our light and salvation, then the fears that once loomed large begin to diminish. For in God's presence, there is no room for fear. It is an invitation to cast aside the shackles of anxiety and embrace the liberating truth that we are under the protective wing of the Almighty. Consider this verse as a lifeline, my friends, one that you can grasp in moments of doubt and uncertainty. It calls you to trust in the Lord's unwavering love and power. So, in the face of adversity, remember these words. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Next, verse 2 tells us, When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Here, we find reassurance that God's protection surrounds us. The psalmist's enemies were confounded in their wicked intentions, stumbling and falling before the righteous strength of the Lord. The imagery painted by this verse is one of both physical and spiritual warfare. It speaks to the very real threats and challenges that we may encounter in our lives. The wicked forces that seek to harm us, whether they manifest as individuals, circumstances, or even internal struggles, are met with divine resistance. Imagine, my friends, a mighty army poised for battle, but as they advance against you, they stop stumble and fall, their plans thwarted. This is the miraculous intervention of the Lord on your behalf. It's a reminder that the battles we face are not ours alone. When we are aligned with the Lord, when our trust is firmly placed in Him, He stands as our protector and defender. The beauty of this verse is found in its timeless relevance and applicability to all. 
It doesn't matter who your adversaries are or what form they take. When God is for you, none can stand against you. The stumbling and falling of the wicked symbolize the defeat of evil, the triumph of righteousness, and the assurance that God's justice prevails. This verse teaches us that our confidence in the face of adversity is not rooted in our own strength or abilities, but in the unwavering power of our Heavenly Father. My friends, it calls us to take refuge in the knowledge that the battles we face, whether they be external or internal, are not ours to fight alone. The Lord is our defender, and in Him we find the strength to stand firm. Let's now take a look at verses 3 to 4 of Psalm 27. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in His temple. These verses encourage us to seek the presence of God above all else, for in His presence we find courage and clarity. The imagery presented in these verses is one of conflict and turmoil, it's a portrayal of a situation where the odds seem insurmountable, where enemies are as numerous as the stars in the sky. Yet, the psalmist's response is one of unwavering faith and confidence. He declares, My heart shall not fear. It's a declaration of defiance against the paralyzing grip of fear. Picture for a moment the chaos of a battlefield, the thunder of war drums and the encampment of opposing armies. In the midst of such turmoil, the psalmist stands resolute, his heart unshaken. Why? Because his confidence is not in his own abilities or in the outcome of the battle, but in the one thing he desires above all else, the presence of the Lord. The phrase, one thing I have desired of the Lord, carries profound weight. It speaks to the singular focus of the psalmist's heart, in the midst of turmoil and uncertainty, he seeks not victory in battle, not riches or fame, but the very presence of God. It's a reminder that when our hearts are anchored in the Lord, when our deepest desire is to dwell in His house, we find a source of strength and courage that transcends the chaos of the world. The house of the Lord mentioned in this verse represents more than a physical dwelling place. It symbolizes communion with God, a place of worship, prayer, and seeking His face. In His presence we find not only refuge, but also the answers to life's most profound questions. As we reflect on these verses, my friends, let us consider the battles we face in our own lives. They may not be waged on a physical battlefield, but they are battles nonetheless. Battles against doubt, against despair, against opposing forces at work or in your marriage or relationships. Sometimes it could also be a battle against other trials of life. In these battles, may we adopt the psalmist's unwavering confidence and desire for the presence of the Lord, for it is in Him that we find the strength to stand and the clarity to navigate life's challenges. Now, verses 5 to 6 tell us, For in the time of trouble He shall hide me in His pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Here we are reminded that God is our refuge, our place of safety. And in his presence, we find the strength to rise above our circumstances. The imagery painted by these verses is one of divine protection and elevation. It speaks to the assurance that in times of trouble, the Lord is our shelter, our place of safety. He shall hide me in his pavilion, the psalmist proclaims. Just as a pavilion offers refuge from the elements, so does the Lord provide refuge from the storms of life. Imagine, my friends, being in the midst of a storm with winds howling and waves crashing all around. But in the midst of this chaos, you find yourself in a hidden sanctuary, 
a secret place of safety. This is the picture the psalmist presents, reminding us that in the fiercest of storms, the Lord is our refuge and our solid foundation. In times of trouble, it's natural to feel overwhelmed, to be surrounded by challenges that threaten to engulf us. Yet, the psalmist's words offer a different perspective. He declares, And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. In the very midst of adversity, he envisions a lifting of his head, a symbol of triumph and exaltation. This verse carries a profound message of hope. It teaches us that in the presence of the Lord, we not only find refuge, but also the strength to rise above our circumstances. It's a message of victory in the face of adversity. The psalmist's response to this divine protection is one of joy and praise. Therefore I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Remember this, in the shelter of the Lord, our hearts are transformed from fear to rejoicing, from despair to praise. Consider, my friends, the storms that have raged in your own life. Reflect on the challenges that have threatened to overwhelm you. In those moments may you find solace in the promise of these verses, that the Lord is your refuge, your place of safety, and in His presence you have the strength to rise above the storms and offer sacrifices of joy and praise. Let us consider the story of Balaam's donkey found in the book of Numbers 22, 21-35. Balaam, a prophet, was on a journey that displeased the Lord, and an angel stood in his path with a drawn sword. Balaam's donkey saw the angel and refused to move forward, even speaking to Balaam. This astonishing event reminds us that God can use even the most unlikely means to protect and guide us when we find ourselves on the wrong path. In this story, the donkey, an unassuming and often overlooked creature, becomes a vessel of divine revelation. God used the donkey to prevent Balaam from stumbling into further disobedience. It serves as a reminder that God can intervene in our lives through the most unexpected circumstances and individuals. When we trust in the Lord's guidance, He can use even the ordinary to convey extraordinary messages of His will. Consider, my friends, the donkey in this story as a symbol of God's willingness to use the unexpected to guide and protect us. Just as the donkey spoke to Balaam, God can use unlikely messengers and circumstances in our lives to redirect our path and prevent us from stumbling into harm's way. It's a testament to God's unwavering commitment to our well-being and His creative ways of ensuring that we stay on the right path. Reflect on your own life journey, my friends. Are there moments when you've encountered unexpected guidance or protection? Have there been times when God used the seemingly ordinary to reveal His extraordinary plan for your life? The story of Balaam's donkey reminds us that God's guidance is not limited by our expectations. He can and will use whatever means necessary to keep us on the path of righteousness and protection. Our God is faithful. Let us look at verses 7 to 8. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, Your face, Lord, I will seek. These verses remind us of the power of prayer the open line of communication we have with our Heavenly Father. When we seek His face with sincerity, He responds with His loving presence. In these verses, we witness the psalmist's heartfelt cry to the Lord. It is a cry of desperation, a plea for mercy, and a call for divine intervention. We are reminded that in our moments of need, we too can cry out to God, knowing that He hears our voices. The profound message here is in the response of the psalmist's heart to God's call to seek his face. In our pursuit of God's presence, we discover a reciprocal yearning in the heart of God when we say, Your face, Lord, I will seek. We align ourselves with his divine purpose. It is a beautiful exchange of love and longing, drawing us closer to our Creator. My friends, 
consider the act of crying out to God. It's a deeply human expression of our need for divine intervention in times of trouble, in moments of doubt, and during the most challenging chapters of our lives. We have the privilege of lifting our voices to the Creator of the universe. The psalmist cry reminds us that God not only hears, but also responds with mercy and love. The psalmist declaration, when you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek, speaks to the intimate nature of our relationship with God. It's a conversation between the soul and the divine, a recognition of the profound longing within us to be in God's presence. In these words, we find an invitation to draw near to God with sincerity and trust, knowing that He eagerly awaits our seeking hearts. As you reflect on these verses, my friends, consider the role of prayer in your own life. Are there moments when you've cried out to God and, in response, felt His mercy and presence? Have you experienced the transformative power of seeking His face, of aligning your heart with His divine purpose? Let these verses serve as a reminder that prayer is not merely an exercise of words, but a sacred communion with the one who longs to draw near to you. Verses 9 to 10 of Psalm 27 read, Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me, nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. In these verses, we see the psalmist's plea for God's unending presence and faithfulness. The words, do not hide your face from me, are a heartfelt cry, a plea for continued communion with the divine. It's a recognition that in God's presence, there is help, salvation, and unfailing love. The psalmist implores, you have been my help, do not leave me nor forsake me. This appeal echoes the profound truth found throughout Scripture. God is a constant and unwavering presence in our lives. Consider the imagery of a loving parent, always present to protect, provide, and guide. The psalmist likens the Lord to a faithful caregiver who never forsakes his children. Even when earthly relationships falter or fail, the Lord's care remains steadfast. The psalmist's words remind us that our Heavenly Father is a source of unending comfort and security. In the face of abandonment or rejection, we can find solace in the assurance that God will never forsake us. His love transcends the love of even the most devoted human relationships. My friends, reflect on your own life. Have you ever felt abandoned or alone? Have you experienced moments when earthly support seemed insufficient? These verses invite you to turn to the Lord, the one who will always take care of you. In God's unwavering presence, there is hope, healing, and a love that surpasses all understanding. Now, let's move on to verse 11. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. This verse is a prayer for divine guidance, a recognition that in the Lord's way, there is safety, and wisdom. The psalmist's plea, teach me your way, O Lord, is an acknowledgement of the need for guidance and instruction. It's an admission that on our own we may stumble and falter, yet in the Lord's way there is clarity and purpose. Imagine walking on a treacherous path with adversaries lurking in the shadows. In such circumstances, we yearn for a guide who knows the terrain and can lead us safely to our destination. The Lord, in His infinite wisdom, is the perfect guide. His way is the smooth path that navigates the obstacles and dangers of life. This verse carries a powerful message of trust. The psalmist entrusts his journey to the Lord, confident that divine guidance will lead him safely through the challenges posed by his enemies. It's a reminder that when we allow God to lead us, even in the face of opposition, we can walk with confidence, knowing that His way is sure and secure. My friends, consider the challenges and adversaries in your own life. Are there obstacles that seem insurmountable, 
Are there enemies or opponents, whether external or internal, that seek to hinder your progress? In this verse, find encouragement to surrender your path to the Lord, to invite His guidance into your journey. For in His way, there is not only safety, but also the assurance that you will reach your destination, undeterred by the obstacles before you. Next, we have verses 12 to 13. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. These verses address the psalmist's plea for deliverance from adversaries and his unwavering faith in God's goodness. The psalmist's cry, Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, is a plea for divine protection in the face of false accusations and violence. It's a recognition that the world can be a place of cruelty and injustice, where the innocent are sometimes unjustly accused. Yet the psalmist's trust in God remains unshaken. My friends, consider the weight of false accusations. The psalmist acknowledges the very real threat posed by those who breathe out violence. In a world filled with injustice, it's easy to lose heart, to despair in the face of adversity. But the psalmist's hope is anchored in something deeper, a belief in the goodness of the Lord. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. These words are a testament to unwavering faith. They affirm that despite the challenges and injustices of the world, there is a profound and abiding goodness in the Lord. It's a goodness that can be experienced here and now in the midst of life's trials. These verses invite us to reflect on our own experiences of adversity and false accusations. Have you ever felt unjustly treated or falsely accused? Have you faced situations where it seemed the world was against you? In these moments, find solace in the psalmist's declaration that even in the face of adversity, he believed in the goodness of the Lord. My friends, it's a belief that sustains us, that carries us through the darkest of times, and that reminds us that God's goodness shines even in the land of the living. Verse 14 tells us, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. This final verse serves as a resounding call to patience, courage, and trust in the Lord's timing. The psalmist's instruction to wait on the Lord is a reminder that God's plans unfold in His perfect timing, not ours. It's an acknowledgement that waiting can be challenging, often testing our patience and resolve. Yet in the waiting there is an opportunity for growth and a deepening of faith. Consider the image of waiting, my friends. It often evokes a sense of anticipation and longing. In our fast-paced world, waiting can be seen as a hindrance, an inconvenience, but the psalmist encourages us to view waiting as an act of faith. It's an act of trust in the one who knows the perfect moment for his purposes to be fulfilled. Notice the psalmist's call to be of good courage. It is a reminder that waiting is not passive. It requires a courageous heart, one that remains steadfast in the face of uncertainty. Waiting on the Lord is an act of faith that demonstrates our confidence in His wisdom and sovereignty. As we reflect on this verse, my friends, let us consider the areas in our lives where we are waiting. Waiting for answers, waiting for breakthroughs, waiting for healing. In the waiting, may we draw upon the courage that comes from knowing that the Lord is with us. He strengthens our hearts, sustains our faith, and reminds us that His timing is always perfect. My dear friends, we have explored the assurances of God's light and salvation, His protection in the face of adversaries, the transformative power of seeking His face, the shelter found in His presence, and the unwavering love that never forsakes us. In Psalm 27, the psalmist reminds us to seek God's guidance, to put our trust in God's goodness amid adversity, and to exercise patience and courage in waiting on the Lord. Through it all, the message is clear from our today. When we anchor our lives in the Lord, 
when we seek his face above all else, we will find strength, courage, and unwavering hope. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me, so that you can receive all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and merciful God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, He who lives and reigns forevermore, You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. O Lord, how majestic is Your name in all the earth! You are the source of my strength and provision, my refuge in times of trouble. And I lift my voice in praise to you, Lord. I am grateful for your goodness and faithfulness in my life and in the lives of others. I thank you, Lord, for being my constant source of strength and guidance. I humbly come before you, acknowledging my shortcomings and trespasses. Please forgive me, dear Lord, for any thoughts, words or actions that have fallen short of your glory. As you have shown me your mercy and grace, I also forgive others who may have wronged me. In the name of Jesus, I release all bitterness and resentment, and I choose to walk in love and forgiveness. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare victory over fear and doubt. O oh Lord, you are my light and my salvation. Whom or what shall I fear? I declare that fear has no place in my life. I rebuke all anxiety, worry or uncertainty that tries to take hold of my heart, and I put my trust in your unwavering love and protection. Lord, I ask for an increase in faith, wisdom and understanding as I seek your face. Teach me your ways and lead me on a clear path. Guide my steps, dear Lord, and prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I declare that I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Merciful Father, I lift up my loved ones before you. May those who do not yet know your grace and love be drawn nearer to you. May they come to experience the transformative power of your presence. Lord, I ask for your divine protection over me and my loved ones. Surround us with your angels, Lord, and guard us from all harm and danger. Shield us from the schemes of the enemy, and let your light shine brightly in our lives. Lord, may your healing touch bring comfort, peace, and wholeness to our bodies, souls, and spirits. By the authority and grace of Jesus Christ, I speak healing and restoration into every area of our lives. As I say this prayer together with everyone listening, Lord, I am grateful for every heart that is humbled before you right now. I pray that the insights and revelations from Psalm 27 may take root in our lives. May we walk in unwavering faith, seeking your face above all else, and finding strength, courage, and hope in your presence. Father, as we come before you united in faith, we pray for healing, both in body and soul, for those among us who are in need of your divine and healing touch. Lord, we ask for your protection to surround us, shielding us from all the plans of the enemy. We declare victory over our lives as we walk in the triumph of your love and purpose, united as one in Christ. Loving Father, you have already done it, and we are grateful and thankful for the great testimonies we are about to receive. Lord, we give you all the honor, glory, and praise. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Amen. If this message has touched your heart, type Amen in the comments below. I declare that the blessings from this prayer are now upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. You can help us spread the gospel and reach even more people by sharing this video with someone you know who needs these blessings. And don't forget to click the like button. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We are so thankful for all those who support us. Remember, you are blessed to be a blessing. For anyone listening who feels called to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to open your heart to God's grace. Your past doesn't define you.
Jesus came to seek and save the lost, and God loves you deeply. It is his will that no one should perish, but that all come to repentance. If you're ready to take that step, know that God is waiting with open arms. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you've prayed this prayer, I encourage you to take the next step by asking a pastor at a local church to baptize you and make your decision to follow Jesus public. Baptism is a powerful symbol of your commitment to Christ. I also encourage you to join a community of believers to grow in your new life with God and deepen your relationship with Him. Feel free to leave your prayer requests in the comments below so we can lift them up to God for your blessings and victory. We also invite other believers across this platform and around the world to join us in praying for you right now. Even if you don't receive a direct reply to your request, know that we are faithfully lifting each need to God, trusting His perfect will and timing. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing and guidance according to God's plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. If this message resonates with you, comment Amen below and let's continue walking together in faith.